Sesame Street is in big trouble. A theme park called Sesame Place in Philadelphia is being sued for $25 million. And I'll give you one guess as to why. A Baltimore family has filed a $25 million lawsuit against a children's theme park. This is the moment a Baltimore father said a Sesame Place character in costume ignored his young black daughter but gave the white kids some attention. I'm hurt, devastated, I mean my wife. You know, um, just looking at her face, that is, it makes me want to cry every time I see it. Kennedy was forced to experience racism at the age of five. Of course, the people wearing the costumes can't see anything because they only have two tiny little holes covered with mesh in the character's mouth to try to make their way around, but it must be racism. And I give it an 80% chance that the person wearing the costume that day <laughs> was black, and that'll come out in court if a judge doesn't dismiss this completely ridiculous and frivolous lawsuit. But this is not the same family who's claiming that last week their daughter's life was also completely ruined because one of the characters didn't high-five her during the parade. And now they're being represented by attorney Ben Crump, the biggest race hustler since Al Sharpton. But my favorite lawsuit stemming from black fragility is still the woman who sued Walmart because the African-American hair care products were kept behind lock and key because <clears throat> certain people keep stealing them all the time. We think that it perpetuates a racial stereotype <laughs> that African-American customers should be suspected of being thieves and criminals. Normal people know that stores do this with high theft items like razor blades and even baby formula. Black fragility, if you don't know, is an emotional state that <clears throat> certain people have as a result largely of the mainstream media brainwashing them that there's racism around every corner where none exists and so they start hallucinating that the entire world is out to get them because they're black. More people need to use linguistic judo and take the terms that the culture Marxists coin that they design to use against us and just flip it around and use it against them. As you know, they coined the term white fragility, which they try to define as white people being uncomfortable about addressing their supposed white privilege. In reality, we're tired of being blamed for things that happened 150 years ago that we had nothing to do with. And by the way, white people freed the slaves and hundreds of thousands of them died doing so. You're welcome. Imaginary racism, which is a form of anti-whiteism, is one of the biggest problems plaguing America today. Everyone remembers the Bubba Wallace noose hoax, which of course just turned out to be the handle onto the garage door opener that had 15 FBI agents investigate and MSNBC attacked me for accurately pointing out that it was imaginary racism the day that news first broke about it. One of the things that happened I found just as striking in some ways in the other direction uh, was a, the reaction among some conservatives to the Bubba Wallace story. There was, I guess inevitably, you had people like Dinesh D'Souza and, and Mark Dice and, and others who came out immediately and said, you know, that they think... Uh, that this is all made up, you know, basically questioning the legitimacy of the story, claiming somehow that this is a Jesse Smollett thing. And remember those supposed nooses that were discovered at a construction site for a new Amazon facility that shut the whole project down while they were investigated? Of course, there were just ordinary ropes that had knots tied on the end so that the workers could hoist tools up onto the scaffolding. One of my favorite instances of imaginary racism is that animal-themed playground in Texas that took down a gigantic gorilla statue after someone complained that that was racist. And now the World Health Organization and the Health Department in New York are saying that the name of monkeypox needs to be changed because when gay black men come down with the disease, they feel that the name has a historic racial connotation. So Tucker Carlson pulled his viewers and came up with a new name for it. They are changing the name because racism or something. We're gonna change the name this time. We're gonna do it with the public's help because democracy is real. So we had a vote, there was no ballot harvesting, you can trust our counting. And the new name for monkeypox is now officially, and we're declaring it, Schlong COVID. Tucker's very based, as the kids say, or has that been deemed a white supremacist phrase? It probably has. So I guess we better just stick with Ultra MAGA. And to support my work, order your Ultra MAGA shirt from my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Or if that's not your style, pick up a Trump Was Right shirt, my new climate change shirt, which illustrates how the climate changes each season or any of my awesome designs. All available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out.